Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we let our new project together every week. And we are continuing our February box together and I'm going to show you something really fun. We're going to be doing envelope liners. Keenan, did you know that you can decorate the inside of your envelope? I had no idea. Well, now you will. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to show you guys. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going through a few different ones. If you're like, what envelopes are you talking about? We have, if you'd like to address your envelopes, we went over a few different ways to address them in a video before this, if you'd like to do that as well. But the five steps that I'm going to show you guys. One is I created this envelope guide sheet. So I'm going to show you uh, the differences between the different types of envelopes that you'll have in your box. So this you can also download if you don't have our box at letsmakeart.com. So that's the first step. The second step is I'm going to show you how to design them. So you'll notice that we are using a few different things and so we're going to design them. I also created this that is going over flourishes, which I'll explain in a second, but this is another practice worksheet that you can get as well at the same time. So this is included with the designing of the liners. Wow, there's so many things I need to tell you guys. This also is included. There's a lot that you can get that um, came in your box with this. Is there actually the physical liner? So you don't have to go out and buy extra paper. We're going to be designing these literally on the paper that came in your box. So that was two still. <laughs> All of that is in designing the liners. Three is you're going to cut it out. Four is we're going to tape it inside. If you can see that. And then five. I feel like you should say the five, the fifth step, the word, the magic word. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out if we should say ta-da or voila, but that's the fifth step is just enjoying it because you made something really pretty and maybe waving a magic wand. I see a magic wand. Also a tiara. I don't know why. Mm, I don't want that. You can wear the tiara. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so those are the five steps. The different supplies I'm going to be using are, whoops, whoa. Paper, oh, you didn't need that. paper everywhere. So <laughs> the different pens that I'm going to be using are, there's a few different ones. So this is a, the La, La Pen Flex Navy. So it's a brush pen. If you'd also like, you can use in your box. Also came a burgundy version of that. And then I'm going to be using a jelly roll a gel pen. This is the copper color, so it has a really fun shimmer on it. And then I'm going to be using also watercolors. So I'm going to be using two of the colors that came in your box. So I'm using tangerine and fuchsia. And then the brush that I'm using is a round 10, but you can use a six or even the two if you have them from our watercolor box. Okay. Let's jam on. So first thing I want to explain is envelope styles. So if you look at these two, that might be hard to see. Better, I'm assuming. Okay, can you guys see how this is a V flap and this is a square flap? Mm. That's all you really need to know. <laughs> there's just two different, there's actually, a, there's a couple different ones. There's shorter, more shallow V flaps or um, square flaps. There's also more shallow V flaps. So I am saying this just to explain that there's different ones that you might have. I want to include both of them in your box. So these, oh, I forgot to say of the supplies, you might need some envelopes. Kicker. You might need some envelopes. You don't need the liners, you just need the envelopes. That would be useful. <laughs> so what, what came in your boxes, if you have that with us, which you can also get if you don't have it right now, but it came with this set where it came with cards and envelopes. So these came with the, the square flap ones. And then I also want to include the V flap ones just to give you options, like I said. In addition, I won't go over this in detail, but on this practice worksheet, or this practice worksheet, this guideline that I created for you guys, I wanted to explain that there are different sizes of envelopes. So if you go into a store and you see different sizes, maybe they're tall or skinnier, there's just a lot, there's a, a wide variety of different sizes. N none of them are right or wrong, obviously, they all exist in the world, 
But if you go in your store and you're a little bit overwhelmed and not sure which one to get, I wanted to say that this one is a five by seven. It's also called an A7, if you ever hear that term. So this is the bigger one of the two that you have. And then you'll all, I also gave you an A6, which is a little bit smaller if you can see in relation. And this is basically a four by six. Technically it's 4.75 by 6.5, but I'm just gonna say 4.56 just to, four, I feel like four by six and five by seven are typical sizes that you yeah. might hear. Too many numbers get confusing. Yeah. It's all in this worksheet, I promise. And then I realized that in the box, do we have one here? I also gave you guys, bummer. That might've been what flew. Keenan, do you see a craft? Oh, right here, yes. Okay, so I also gave you guys, well, how do we do this? Can you see all of it? <laughs> Trying to show that you can visually see that they're all three different sizes. What if you put them side by side? Like that. That works? That's all in the shot? Yeah. Okay, well then. Or you could stack them and they could see each of them through. Oh, yep. Nice. Boom. Wow, thank you. So many, so many different options. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you guys see how those are three different sizes? So this smallest one is called an A2. And it's, so we go A2, A6. Maybe we could add little things for you guys. A2, A6, and A7. Again, you don't have, you can ignore everything I said and that will probably, I, I always forget actually and sometimes I have to Google it. Um, but the reason why that I wanted to say that now is that I also showed that what size the card would be. So the reason why this is important is that if you have a smaller envelope but you made your card on, for example, a five by seven card and you're bummed that it won't fit, if you just realize it before you design, that will help you. So that's why I wanted to call that out and explain the different things for you guys. Okay, second step, we're going to design. There are a couple different, oh, that was a different one that I did. There are a couple different ones that you can do and I created this worksheet to help you guys if you want to design your liners like this. So if you can see that this one, this one isn't specific lettering, however, it looks really cool because we're taking aspects of a lettering technique that is called, I guess it's a technique or an added thing called flourishes. So flourishes are decorate, de decor, de decorative? Decorative. Thank you. Decorative parts of the letters that you can add. So these are, you might see on the crossing of a T, for example. So I wanted you to just get practice with doing these shapes. So I, you can use either the brush pen or the regular pen, but all you're gonna do is you're gonna trace over. So I drew little arrows to show the direction to start. So there's really no wrong way to do this. What I suggest experimenting if you wanna do something similar is see how you like your hand to move. So for example, actually I'm just gonna go for it and draw it at the same time. So then we're killing two birds with one stone, but feel free to go through that whole practice worksheet. So as I'm getting everything out, I will say that if you have our box, You'll be wondering, Nicole, why did you give us so much paper? It's not because I, I care about trees. Keenan called me out and says I don't care about trees. I, not recently. I have not called you out recently <laughs> about trees. But I also care about you guys and giving you guys a lot of things. So there are 10 square flap A7. So that is the bigger version. I also wrote what size it is. Is there are 10 of these because you have 10 envelopes that came in that other kit, and you'll notice that it's flat on top. There are two of the A6 because you have this pretty color envelope and you have this pretty color envelope. So you'll notice that those are different shapes. And then you'll have two A2s. So that's why you have so many things going, so much paper going on that I wanted to explain. But, let me go back to my flourishes. So if you want to create this similar look, gosh, paper everywhere, <laughs> is feel free to practice and do this at the same time. And then when you're ready to go, what you're gonna do is, I just want you to go for it. Don't think about it. You don't need to draw this in pencil first. 
because all we're doing is I'm mimicking the similar shapes and I'm basically just drawing loops and different curls. So I can see a space right here, so I'm just gonna fill it. So all you're doing is filling in different spaces. And it's interesting as I'm using this, you guys can see I'm using this pen. I think I'm pressing maybe a little bit too hard so it kind of skips a little bit. I actually like the way that looks so that doesn't bother me. But I just wanted to call that out. And so as I'm doing this, you will notice that I'm going outside the lines. Can you see the lines on the camera? Yes, I can. Okay. So, color outside the lines. Don't be afraid to do that. And the reason why is that we're gonna cut that out, so it really doesn't matter. But that way, it goes all the way to the edge. So again, what I'm doing is I'm taking different parts of this, of our practice worksheet, and applying it here. So what you can test out is if you decide do you like to, so let's pay attention to my hand. So my hand for this one is going to move with the stroke. So you can see that my hand went like this. Or is it easy, easier for you to keep your hand grounded the entire time? So my hand didn't lift up. Could you see that, Kenan? Yeah, can you push that for the side cam to show? Can you yeah. push that to the left? Left. Yep. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Do, yeah, do, yeah. So one more time. So I'll do the first one is I'm going to move my entire wrist. Or I'm going to stay stationary. And I basically just moved my fingers. So you'll notice that, Nicole, you did two different shapes, so that's kind of not fair. I like when I have a really big stroke, it's actually helpful. For example, so if I were to do this stroke and not move my hand, I can't do the full breadth of it. So by moving my hand in that instance, it's helpful. For me though, personally, when I have a smaller stroke, I like to stay stationary. Whereas if I were to do it like this, I just don't feel as in control. So I wanted to show you both ways that you can experiment and see what works for you. There's no right or wrong with that. I just wanna show that. The other point, what did I say here? Draw on the top half a little past the arrows. So I did that so that you know that you don't have to actually go all the way down because as you can see on this envelope, we're gonna put it inside and so you don't see the bottom unless you really think someone's gonna go in there and look, which someone can do that. And then if you want to do that, you can do the whole thing. But don't feel like you have to because I drew the arrows so that's about where you'll, um, the part will be visible. So that's one design. Another option is, this one, which we're going to, in this instance, I'm taking one of the square flap A7 liners because this is the bigger envelope. And I'm jumping off and I'm taking this as inspiration and I'm going to write one word. So I decided to write hello because they'll be opening this envelope and it's the first thing they'll see. So this is when the lettering comes in. However, you don't have to focus so much on thin and thick lines if you've been with us and you're practicing and getting good with that. The beautiful thing about this is that this is just a pattern. So no one's going to be criticizing or judging your lettering at all. And the reason why it looks a little bit different is that I added a flourish. So this flourish right here was added. Whereas if I were to just write hello, I might just draw a straight line. I added this curve, which is the same curve that you see here. So if you want to practice that first, you can do that. But I'm going to take the same concept. So I'm going to I'm going to move my hand because I'm going to draw a really big stroke. Am I in an okay spot? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go outside the lines. I'm going to move my hand a little bit and then push. So I'm going to draw hello. Not really thinking about, again, thin and thick lines. I'm not really worried about where I'm drawing. I'm just kind of going with the flow of it. And just filling the space. So maybe the curve, I, I tend to make the curve start lower and then go higher and then curve around. But if you'd like, you can have it start the opposite where it starts Let's do it here. So it starts down and then comes up. So can you see the difference between that? 
Are you asking me? Because yeah. yes, Sorry. <laughs> I can see that. Can you also see it? I actually like that third hello you wrote, the H. I don't know why, but it has like an adorable feature to it. <laughs> Maybe it's the curve of this. You like that? I, I like where the, I don't know what it's called. I just like the H. <laughs> so then you can also, if you want, like I was saying, that he might like the curve here. Maybe you add a little bit more of a curve or you add it and have it loop a little bit more like that. I will say this because I've done this before. With this specific word, do you know what I'm going to say? With this specific word, be careful that even on this example, if I made this word bigger and the O was outside, it would say a word. Not hello. <laughs> Not hello. Hello so maybe, without the O. It's okay if it says he, which is fine with it. <laughs> but yes, just be mindful of that a little bit. That's the only thing you really need to be mindful of. But yes, it's a fun exercise also for just seeing space that you can fill. So can you guys see how I made these L's? They're both L's, but I drew this one a little bit taller because I had this space right here. So I was filling that in. So let me do one more because I saw my arrows right there. Boom. Okay. And then actually, so I see the space here. You can just draw a curve there, kind of fill that in if you'd like. There we go. That's the second one. Okay, the next one, the last one is, we're gonna have fun with watercolors. So here's a little secret hint, not hint, tip, is this paper, so this paper is actually computer paper. My favorite kind to use is the HP, HP Premium Laser Jet. And that one is basically a fancier paper, or bougier paper as Keenan calls it. I've only called it that in the past, not recently. <laughs> it's okay. It's nice paper if you feel it. And so the great thing about it is, as you guys have seen, it holds, it works great on your markers. As you're going to see, it also works on watercolors. So this is done on watercolor paper. My tip while we're doing this is don't use too much water. Be because it isn't watercolor paper, it won't hold as much. So watercolor paper is designed to hold a lot of water. This paper obviously is not, but it still works. Just know that, be careful if you're used to watercolors and having it really damp. Just try and shy away from that a little bit more than normal. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I just made a rainbow pattern. And I went from, I started with fuchsia at the bottom, I believe, and then I went up to tangerine. So you can take this a couple different ways. So I have tangerine and this is my fuchsia. How's my situation? Gravy. Okay. As they say. <laughs> as you say. Yes. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I dipped it in water just to get it a little bit damp, and I'm going to spin in. You're gonna need to move your head. <sighs> I got this. Your paper was in a great location. <laughs> My head, unfortunately, was not. Okay. So the reason why my head gets in the way, and I will explain this, guys, and then I'll move my head. I tend to like to paint with my hand supported. So it's a little awkward to paint like this. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my paper and then kind of lean. So I'm, one, I'm, I'm not in your guys' way, but I wanted to explain that for you guys because if you ever have trouble drawing and you figuring it out and it feels a little bit awkward, try and rotate your paper. This is actually a great lesson for lettering in general, but I found that when I paint also, my tendency is because I'm right-handed to do that. Maybe if you're left-handed, your tendency is to do that. Not good with your posture, but you get the job done. So I'm going to rotate a little bit more. What I wanted to say was, I think this orange, not that I need to make it exact, but I want to say is that I think this is the full I keep calling it full breath. The full weight, I don't know what the terminology or what Sarah says, the full amount of the orange. However, what I want to do is I want to actually create a lighter orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to add more water to it. Is there a term that Sarah uses? You just mean not as concentrated. Yes, but I wasn't sure if there was an actual term. Hmm. I'm uh, not sure. Sarah. Yeah, we'll ask Sarah. So what I'm going for is that this first stroke is going to be a lighter version of the tangerine that comes at right out of the bottle, which 
let me say to you guys now, is that if you have your bottle and it's a little bit um, chunky, all you have to do is shake it. Mine also was like that, but it still comes out great. So don't, don't worry, there's nothing wrong with it. It still works really great. I just wanted to say that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna do just drawing a line. How is my head? Perfect. Okay. So you can tell that that is a lighter color and it's actually kind of turning out and becoming more of a yellow rather than orange, even though I was, this is tangerine. And so what's cool is that now I'm just gonna add dip in here and get a little bit of tangerine in here, go back over. So that's a little bit darker and then draw my next stroke. Do the same thing. Maybe let's get it a little bit more. Try my next stroke. So you can dictate how thick your strokes are. Ooh. So now I think we're almost at the full concentration of it. So I'm just going to go for here and maybe not. Well, we'll see. Ooh, either way, that looks really pretty. So that is the full concentrated of your tangerine. So now I'm going to transition because I want to keep going and I want to have my fuchsia at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tangerine bring it over here, pick up some fuchsia, just a little bit of fuchsia, and bring it over there. Let's see, this will be interesting. I'm not sure if that, mm, that's a little bit too similar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit more. So it's kind of a try as you go. If it feels a bit too light and you want it to be a different, darker color, just go over it. Again, I would only go over it one more time because if you guys can see up top, Actually, you probably can. Can you see how it's a little ripply right there? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't bother me, but I'm calling that out because if I were to go over this probably even a third time, it would bend a little bit too much more than I want. So again, this is computer paper. I will also mention the reason why I'm not using watercolor paper is that when we go to fold this envelope, I tried it. I promise you guys I tested it out. It's too thick. It will work, especially if you have something to score. It will work, it just wasn't my preference. So I decided to do it and I tested it and it worked on this computer paper. So that's why. So now I'm gonna keep going, add in a little bit more fuchsia. So if I, I kind of ran out of color, so I feel like I need to get more and I need to get more water. So you'll notice I'm not using that much. So there, it's a little bit more red kind of run out, so I'm gonna go over it one more time. So I think, so I'm getting to the bottom. This actually, oh, that looks so pretty. Maybe I won't get to the full, again, breath, I was gonna say it again, the full breath of my fuchsia, but that's okay for me. Then this is the final one. Actually, I think I'm gonna go one more just to be safe and maybe that will be this fuchsia. Might need a little bit more. Where is it right here? Okay. So all you need is a few drops. You don't need very much. There we go. Okay. Ooh, that's very satisfying. It's, very satisfying. <laughs> it's like a beautiful sunset, the ripple of it. Okay, we are done with step two. Step three, cut it out. So I have my scissors. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna fast forward because you guys don't need to watch me cut. I'm just going to cut along the lines that I have on here for all three of them. Go. Okay, so we are back and I finished cutting those all. So now I'm gonna show you how you can insert them. We're gonna start with the V flap one. So what I'm gonna do, you know what I realized? 
This is the wrong one. So if you did this and you, <laughs> I did this on a smaller one. I, re I cut, yes I did. So I actually did, this was the A2 envelope, which is the smaller one. I don't have an empty one handy for you guys because I already did this previously. But this one is supposed to go in here. So you can see, and this, if this happens to you, this is a, actually a great example, that fits all the way to the edge and it fits up here. Whereas on this one, it will still work actually if this is what you're doing. But you'll notice, can you see that, how it doesn't go all the way to the edge? Yeah. Any, actually, if this happens to you, no one would know that this is technically not correct. Or what you can do is, if you want, you can just bring this all the way up higher so that it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Still That's works. Thinking, yeah. Like yeah. So, but I'll show you how I actually glue them in using this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing as I'm just inserting this in just to test it out. So that fits great. If you want, if you end up realizing that, I know you guys can't see it on camera, but there is a strip of glue on the top, which is where you would lick it. If this ended up getting a little bit higher than you'd like, just feel free to snip the top of, the, top of it off a little bit so that you have more of that glue showing. Not a problem at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it back out. I'm going to use, so this is, I don't know if they, what, what Tombow calls it, but this is Tombow's version of, I just call it scrapbook tape. So it's basically a dispenser. Let me make sure I'm using it the right way, this way. So I'm gonna hold it down. So this is great because, hold on, I'm trying to think of, I'm going to do, hold on, sorry, what I'm thinking through before I finish that thought is, I forget now. I'm going to test this guys out with you on camera. I'm forgetting now when I built this, if I tape the entire thing, I'm going to do it two ways. If I tape the entire thing or if I tape just the bottom and then fold it and then tape the top. So I'm going to test it with you guys on camera because I can't quite remember which technique I realized worked better. But what I'm doing is I'm just using this tape dispenser because it comes out really easily. We sell these on our website. We do if you don't have one of these, they are so handy. But if you don't have this, you could also use double-sided tape or glue stick. So, I have tape on both sides. Inserting that in. Ooh. Pushing that down. So what I did is I just had it on the outside. And then I'm going to fold this so it creases easily. You might get fun watercolor all over you. It's all good. Okay. So that actually worked. If you would feel more comfortable, I'm going to show you the other way. If you'd like to do this and just insert the bottom first. So when I'm doing this is I, there's glue on here. So if you get it too close, it might stick a little bit. So I kind of, I, how do I explain this on camera? I am inserting this, but I'm bringing it, I'm closer to the top of the envelope than the bottom. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. It's just hard to see what I'm doing. I was going to try and help you, but that's how, that's how I would describe okay. it too. You almost have to lift it up as you throw it in. Yeah. yeah. So instead of having it be closer to the bottom. Okay, so the other way that I was thinking was, I think I tested this out where I did that first and then I folded it. And then so I have that chillin' like that and then I'm going to add my tape afterwards. So actually, now that I'm doing this on camera with you guys, both techniques work. Oh, that skipped a little bit. Oh, I use this too much. That's why I have another one. <laughs> wow. This is how much I love this thing. I forgot to say that in the supplies. If we can add that to the beginning, is they'll need tape or glue. Okay. Boom. Yeah. Both of them, either way, whichever way works. And then the final step. So we have those inserted. 
is this one already has some lettering. This one is a beautiful pattern. You can totally leave that. Or what I did was just to add a little fun thing is can you see on this one, I'm not sure which angle is best for you guys to see. I just wrote out hello, yeah. with a little smiley face. So when they open it, they're like, oh, that's cool. So I'm using my gold gel pen and I'm just, oops, I'm just going to write a little hello for them. Hi. With a smile. With a smile. <laughs> okay, that is it. Now I can say ta-da. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> we are done. Um, this, I, it was so much fun designing this project for you guys. I hope you have fun with this as well. Don't forget to seal it, put a postage on, physically put it in the mail and watch your friends and family and those who you're sending it to enjoy something fun that you made especially for them. So we have a Facebook group that I'd love for you to join if you're not a part of called Let's called Let's Make Art Lettering. There it is. You can come and join that or we have an Instagram called Let's Go Make Art. Feel free to join along, tag us. We're a big community that we love to cheer each other on and also give each other inspiration. I'd love to see maybe you make a different liner. Help um, grow this community and show us what you make so that we can cheer each other on together. See you guys next week. Bye.